Hey, what's up guys, this is Kiri Cloudy and a couple of days ago Google just finally dropped their first public beta for Android 11 for their Pixel devices and soon it's gonna come and make their way to other flagship devices like the OnePlus 8 series and the Oppo Find X2 series and the Mi 10 and all that stuff but that's the official stuff. What about guys like you and me who have unsupported devices and want to get a taste of Android 11? Well, thanks to Project Treble and the Android developer community, now you can. All you just need is a Project Treble enabled device, an unlock bootloader and a custom recovery installed. So what you're gonna install is called a generic system image or a GSI. Basically, it's just one universal file, contains all the Android framework, the OS itself, and like I said, it's universal and can be installed on pretty much any Android device, regardless of the manufacturer and the make. Similar to how Windows works, you can you have just one ISO file and that can be installed on pretty much any computer, whether you build it from scratch or it's a laptop. So it's kind of the similar theory. But installing the GSI alone won't cut it. We need drivers for your phone, like we install drivers on our PC, and that package of drivers is called a hardware abstraction layer also HAL and that is part of something called the vendor implementation layer which is exclusive for all vendors and OEMs and devices and since we are not an OEM we don't have our own Android skin what we're gonna do is just use a Android 10 based custom ROM and use the vendor partition of that particular ROM and then we'll be set and that did sound a lot simple right but in reality it's not there could be a bunch of things which could go wrong. You might face some errors uh, and Google Play services could not work and you are having trouble installing GMS APK. And you know what? My best advice for you would be to join Telegram. Telegram is where everything happens with regards to Android development. This whole ROM community is in Telegram. So just go join your device community uh, check the notes, check search for your problem in that thread before asking anything and you can if you're having some specific problems you can then ask people what your doubt is and they'll definitely help you. I found some very helpful people, very nice guys in Telegram. So yeah, Telegram is basically your best bet and after some research and digging you can basically get this thing up and running, no problems. Now with regards to GSIs, you have a couple of options. First is Google's own GSI which has Google Play services built in, the latest ones. And that is by far the most usable, rock solid build I have tested. And although it lacks a couple of features since this is pure stock bare bones AOSP, it lacks a bunch of features, but if you want to have access to all of those pixel features like navigation gestures and all that stuff, uh, you can use the unofficially pixel board GSIs by a developer named Irfan. He does some great work with regards to GSIs. Uh, I'll link, leave a link to both of those down below if you want to download them. Uh, but yeah, I installed both. Uh, I installed the Google GSI on my Redmi Note 7 Pro with the Pixel Experience vendor. And I also installed the Pixel Port GSI with uh, Evolution X as a vendor on my mom's Mi A2. And she was really sweet to uh, lend it to me for this video. So yeah, shout out to her. Okay, so here comes the PSA part. This is not meant for daily use. Like seriously. The best you can get to with GSIs is usable, not stable. And using GSIs, installing GSIs is very finicky. Some devices are better than the others. Like my Redmi Note 7 Pro, I could not get the Pixel Port GSI installed in that with even half usability. Uh, I, had, I was having DPI issues. I was having system UI crashes. I was having GMS issues. I could not install GMS. And I'm sure there are fixes for that if you dig hard enough, but I settled for the Google GSI. And even in that, developer options are crashing. I'm not able to use the new media controls, which I'll get to in a bit. So yeah, you trying to get what I'm saying. This is not meant for daily use. This is just for like a test drive thing to take a look at the features which is my perfect segue to take a look at the new features of Android 11. Okay, so the first Android 11 feature and by far my favorite one, new media controls. The media controls have shifted from being a persisting notification to this collapsible active widget in the quick settings. It looks very clean in my opinion and you can switch between the output devices like iOS, so that's awesome. And if you have multiple stuff playing like a podcast, 
and a song on different devices you can switch between them uh, the expanding animation is sort of sketchy but it's okay it's a beta i mean what can you expect and i guess this is the most highlighting feature of android 11 since this is what looks different from android 10 but i don't think it's final yet though since uh, you need to enable it in developer options you need to dig in deep and i was able to use this feature on my mi a2 fortunately but not on my redmi note 7 pro a lot of people are having trouble as accessing this feature and it is not even available on the official oxygen os android 11 beta so yeah this might or might not make it into the final release but i really hope it does the next big change is the power menu it now takes up the entire screen and has new buttons for reboot and shutdown but also if you have the google home app installed you can add quick access uh, shortcuts to your smart home devices and also it shows your purchases reservations suppose you have a ticket or a hotel booking so that stuff from your gmail account will show up over here uh, so that's nice the buttons have this new ios style thing going on for them which is okay but it's honestly too random to put all of these things in the power menu but nevertheless it's pretty neat uh, the next thing is support for chat bubbles google is now officially providing a system wide api for chat bubbles instead of developers using the older system overlay api for messaging apps uh, this is now properly only supported by facebook messenger for now other apps not so much so yeah messaging apps need to be optimized for this new api and yeah this is a very good sign and there is a possibility that soon all types of messaging apps will support this feature since google is officially baking it into android next we have some minor stuff notifications now look a little bit different and have categorized headings so that looks a lot cleaner plus there is a new settings for which conversations can pass through your do not disturb so that's also pretty cool next up when you swipe up to get to the multitasking tray you now get three new buttons the first button takes a screenshot the third button instantaneously shares the screenshot and the second one is kind of strange and interesting. It will select text from the contents of the current selected screen and right now it does not do anything but I'm guessing that it will be able to copy and paste or even run a Google Lens search uh, through that. Personally this feature to me feels a little weird and random and honestly it's interesting and potentially could be useful. I think they should have just added scrolling screenshots which is still not available in Android, believe it or not. But yeah, speaking of screenshots, what is finally available is built-in screen recording. Finally! Thank you! Many people have been waiting and asking for this feature for a long time and it's great to finally have it. Although it doesn't record system audio just yet, but hey, at least we have something. And there are a lot of other tiny things like wireless ADB improvements to project mainline which modularizes things and updates them through Google Play services. Some improvements with permissions. So yeah, that stuff is really good. So yeah, overall, I had a ton of fun using and checking out Android 11 on my Redmi Note 7 Pro and my mom's Mi A2. But yeah, obviously this is not daily driver material. And as soon as I'm done shooting this video, I'm gonna go back to Android 10. But yeah, that's it for Android 11, available for all Pixel devices after Pixel 2. Not the OG Pixel, sadly, since uh, that's done with its three years of updates and you cannot even install a GSI on it since it's not fully travel compliant it lacks VNDK support so your best bet is to wait a couple of months more and get a custom ROM for it maybe Pixel Experience 11.0 let's see I'll make a video on that but yeah that's basically it thank you so much for watching hope you like this video like this video please subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the